I've been working on a concept lately, and I want to show it to you today how it currently is. And there's plenty of room for development, but I think that this is a great idea for a portable, real style antenna that we just haven't seen on the market yet. And now today I'm just going to show you. And of course you can let me and the companies know in the comments below, what do you think of an antenna that's like this? If you're unfamiliar, and I'll link it below, the spool antenna is a end fed half wave, a 49 to one, and you could reel out the wire. Now you could see I made a nice little mod and I put a glass filled nylon bolt through the middle and two nuts on this side so that I could pull and I could spool in the wire without the spool antenna ever re really leaving my roll bar. And uh, that kind of led me to something that I've been pushing here for a while. Before we get started, let's go ahead and just unscrew this and take a look at it on the bench. By bench, I mean the Bronco. And basically what we have here is what I call the Riba dude. It's a traveler and fed random wire and I labeled it 40 meters through 10, which I'll explain in just a moment. Now all these stickers you see on here are hiding a spool tenna logo. If you're unfamiliar, spool tenna did give the opportunity for you to download the Gerber files and make your own PCB boards. But there was something I failed to realize. Even though Spool Tenna provides the Gerber files for the PCBs, and you could go have the PCB made at places like JLC, PCB, and many more, uh, they do have a Spool Tenna logo on the front as well as the back of the PCBs. In order to make these and stay within legal standards, you have to remove the logo or anything that shows Spool Tenna. And the reason for that is it is a trademark name. And well, you don't want to get in any trouble with the spool antenna company. Let's take a look though further here. So as I mentioned, I went ahead now and I have the Riba dude. It's on a spool antenna reel. And it currently, as you see it here, has about 29 feet of wire. We're going to test this today with 29 feet of wire. And then we're going to extend it out to around 125 feet. But basically we have a BNC connector, some poor soldering, four points that we could put in a counterpoise lug. And then we have a banana connector for our antenna wire to go into. On the side of this here, once we unspool it, I'll show you the 3D print. In fact, if we take a look here on the bench, I've already recorded some of the 3D printed materials and some of the teardown of this. There's two nuts attached to that glass nylon bolt. And this blue tape here is plumber's tape. Helps me screw in to here. I also want to mention, you might not be familiar with a 49 to one like you see on the spool antenna, and a four to one like you see on the Riba dude. Let's just kind of go really short here. And a 49 to one has a very high impedance, but it's an end fed half wave, which means we take a half of wavelength, light wavelength, excuse me, a wire for a certain band. So for example, around 64 to 65 feet, depending on the wire you use for 40 meters is a half of a wavelength. That means you're going to get 40 meters, 20 meters, 15 meters, and 10 meters without the use of a tuner. When you look at a Riba dude, there's really no bands that are actually, or a 4 to 1, 200 ohms down to 50. There's no real bands that are supposed to be resonant, okay? What happens is you utilize an antenna tuner to make bands resonant. And so today we have about 30 feet or so of wire on here, and we're going to try to tune up 40 all the way to 10. Uh, we're going to try to tune up something like 160 and then we're going to add on that extra roughly 90 to 100 feet of wire. So we have 125 feet of wire and we're going to see if things tune up better or worse. Of course, along the way, we're going to try to make some contacts. By the way, nothing that I'm doing here is actually groundbreaking. It's not shattering, but it's taking multiple concepts and thinking outside the box to give you a different perspective. So for today's scenario, I'm using the recommended wire links by DX Supply, which I will link below. That 3D printed part that I made, I want to mention to you that it really could be probably PVC. I think that the spool antenna was originally using PVC as well. I chose to do a 3D design so that I could make the through holes and not have to drill the through holes later. So it worked out in my favor. And now we're going to take a look at this toroid. Something important to mention is all the windings that you see here, I filed a tutorial on a website and I now have the chart up on the screen for a four to one unun by IV3 SBE. Nothing spectacular here. I used a T200-2 toroid 
and I wound it as it shows on the actual screen. And I was happy, but the one problem was the PCB is made for a 49 to one. And so it wasn't just gonna fit correctly. That led to a little out of the box thinking. And what I mean by that is there's a couple of things that I had to modify on the PCB to include the crossover. I just used a red wire to solder the two crossover points, which would have been from the NFED half wave. And I soldered them to bridge the gap. And then of course I have the green wire that you see toward the left. And that green wire is the radiating element wire. I went ahead and I brought that green wire and I brought it up to the top where the banana plug connector is. It's not the best solder job, but it does the job. Let's just go ahead and plug in our banana connector, which is a little bit loose. I could fix that later. And then we're gonna take this little clip here and we're gonna give it a little strain relief. I got a little S binder here. And all I'm gonna do is clip it onto the top of the little dude mast, just like that. So then we got the little dude in the ground. We got it clipped in up the top or in a sloper configuration. By the way, if it's a little loose, you could actually just, you know, and start reeling in a little bit and you'll get a little bit more tension on the wire. And that might even be a benefit or a deterrent for tuning everything up. But there's a lot of cool ways you could use the spool. One way you just saw, the other way you could put this in between and, and walk it out or walk the wire out so it just on spools on a tent spike. But then there's also something else you could do and why I think that this is a pretty cool concept. If you had something like a 30 foot mast or you had a 60 foot mast, a million foot mast, I don't know, but you could get yourself a support block clamp. I happened to design and make this one. And on the support block clamp, there's a section for an M8 threaded bolt. So much like I'm doing it on the roll bar, I could do the same thing right here, set up the mast, and it would almost be kind of like a fishing pole with the antenna wire going up. Just something to get you to think a little creatively. And uh, let's go ahead and try to tune this up and see if we can contact some stations. And just an update for you, 40 meters through 10 meters, all under two to one with the tuner, things look good. Here is what I've done in order to go ahead and have a link. Okay, in today's scenario, all I have to really do is, I made a little bit of a strain relief that's gonna hook onto an s beaner, and then I just have a Wago connector, and I'll put the Wago on, and then I have the extra 90 to 100 feet or whatever. Jason, good luck, 7-3. <clears throat> 7-3, thanks for the activation, see ya. November Golf, I'm the only five calling CQ for March on the air. Whiskey 9. Yeah, we got a bunch of you in there. Yeah, the Whiskey 9 station, please. And I have you at a 5x3 in Northern Illinois, QSL. Roger, thank you very much for Illinois. I appreciate it and good luck. Have a great time, thanks. Hey, had you at a 33, 3 by 3 uh, Good luck out there today. Uh, Roger, Roger. I'll copy this uh, 3x3. Three three. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Seventy-three. Yankee Lima Alpha, standing by. Whiskey Niner, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Had a Whiskey Nine. Was that Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot? QSL, QSL. Have you at a five-six fifty-six into Northern Illinois today? Roger, Roger. Thank you for Northern Illinois. You're five-seven right here in Tango, November, both my parks. I appreciate it. Good luck out there in seventy-three, my friend. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate you, seventy-three. Thank you, photo. Mark on the air. Kilo 2 Alpha, November, Fox, on the air. Whiskey 9 or Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Foxtrot. Interesting call. Whiskey 9, Fox, 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 5, 9. And Fox, US, 1611 and 6544, New Jersey, over. Thanks for the report, QSL, QSL. I have you at a 5x3, 53 in Northern Illinois. Got the 5-3 in Illinois. Thank you. It's a good start to my uh, activation. Thank you. My pleasure. Uh, good luck out there. This is Whiskey 9, Fox, 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 73. 73, QRZ from Kilo 2 Alpha, November, Park 98. 
here. Really cool antenna. You know, not too many contacts today, but the fact that it tunes up pretty much everywhere, I, I really like that. So let me go ahead and wrap everything up by, by getting everything cleaned up. I'll be right back. Sometime last year, I started to reach out to companies about the concept of a four to one that would be in a reel. And unfortunately, none of the companies seem to have much interest, but that gives us the opportunity to build it ourselves. Because if you want something done that's not out there, you're going to have to figure out how to do it. That's my goal here on the channel is to have you think outside the box. In fact, as I'm sitting here talking to myself or a camera, I thought about that four to one. And depending on what toroid was used, the type of toroid and so forth, you might be able to put a switch in there that switches it from a four to one un un to a four to one ballon. So now not only do you have the possibility for a portable Rybakov antenna, but a portable four to one ballon. This is just a rough thought in my head, but you could start to see where doing these things starts to develop. So today, I showed you the rough concept of a four to one un un based off of a spool tenon design. I went out, I made a few contacts and yeah, I was able to tune up 40 meters through 10 with the 29 feet of wire. When I added the additional wire, I was then able to tune up 80 meters and parts of 160. I'll have to do a little bit more experimentation with some of that here in the future. Anyway, hey, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it got you to start to think outside the box and maybe figure out what you might be able to make, adapt to, or build upon. Thanks for watching the channel, everybody, and take care. And if you're one of those 74% of the people who are watching this and aren't subscribed, what are you waiting for? I would really appreciate it if you considered it and maybe you'll like one of these videos right here.